Hey, Sahar Galt here, and we're going to look at Dorico, Steinberg's new music notation software. They call it the future of scoring. Let's see what it can do. When you first open Dorico, you're greeted by this hub, which gives you the opportunity to select some predetermined ensembles. These are templates for common arrangements with parts already loaded. You know, orchestral, brass band, SATB, that kind of thing. But we're going to create a new empty project. And this, of course, allows us to add the soloists, sections, or ensembles for which we'll be composing. And you can mix and match anything you want. You want to compose for break drum and hurdy-gurdy? Knock yourself out. Let's go ahead and add a solo player. And you can scroll through all of the instruments if you have the time. But there's a search bar. So you can type in exactly what you want. This is missing from a lot of other notation programs. Seems like a small thing, but time matters. And this is one of the ways you can see that the Dorico team cares. All right, so we've got our part loaded. And if you want to add more, just click down here. Same three options. Let's just add another part to show you what happens. Boom, now there's another staff. And if it turns out I didn't want an alto clarinet, you can trash it. Everything realigns. Easy as that. Now, I imagine you might be wondering what a flow is. And this is basically Dorico's way of dealing with separate movements or individual songs within a larger work. So if I add a new flow, you can see I have a separate piece of music, but it's within the same project. It can have the same instrumentation as your other flow or its own. It's a nice idea. I like it. And that's the broad strokes in the setup tab. So let's hop over to the right tab, which is where we input the music. If you've used notation programs before, this is going to be pretty familiar. Click on the note value, click on the staff. You can also enter the notes by typing letters or playing your MIDI keyboard, change rhythmic values by clicking on different rhythms or using your number pad. Most notation programs do something like this. Let's get a half note in here for later. Okay, now I'm gonna continue entering notes via my MIDI keyboard, which means Dorico is gonna to have to make some decisions about the accidentals I use. And you see it's done it intelligently. A key that uses B flats and E flats. Well, that's likely to be G minor, which uses F sharps, designating the leading tone, rather than G flats, the enharmonic equivalent. Really well done. Now you'll notice up until now, I've been able to enter notes at will, free of meter, which is liberating. And when I select a time signature, Dorico bars it up beautifully. But here's the really clever innovation. If I change meter, Dorico knows how to handle it. See what happened to our half note? It's been tied across the bar. Changes like this in other notation programs require insane rework. And Dorico is so elastic that I can select insert mode. I can insert notes. And of course, the rest of the score gets displaced by the rhythmic value of the notes I enter. And Dorico automatically adjusts all the notes downstream to make sure they still look right. Of course, with insert mode off, you just overwrite all of the coming notes, which has its place too. The other thing I love about Dorico is how it handles dynamics. Let me show you in the context of a hairpin. It's as simple as this. You select all of the notes that you want to be part of the dynamic gesture. Click on a hairpin, and it's the right length, bound to these notes. And what's even more slick is if I move these notes to a location they might collide with the hairpin, it readjusts the hairpin to get out of the way. Pretty cool. Okay, and there's a newly added chord symbol feature. You type in the chord, it makes it look right. If you're making lead sheets, this is something you'll need. It's worth mentioning that the Dorico team has been really diligently expanding the capability of the program, listening to the users on which features to implement, what bugs to fix, and a recently implemented feature that a lot of people have been asking for is repeat endings, and they work beautifully. Apply it to what you want to be the last bar in the first ending, and the bar after becomes the second ending. Done in one click. Why tremolos and repeat endings are in the same dialogue? It's a little riddle for you to figure out. Okay, and triplets work like any other notation program that you're familiar with. 
But Darko has a really intuitive way of dealing with the rest of the tuplets. Press semicolon, and then you simply type the specific ratio that you want. Three against two, four against three, five against four, or whatever. Okay, that's the greatest hits under the right tab. Let's head over to engrave, which is where you make more specific adjustments to how things look. And adjusting the length or direction of a stem is a point and click affair. And it looks like I've gone for the awkwardly long stem, so perfect. Of course, you can make broader changes here, like system breaks or staff spacing. Probably not gonna get too finicky about that with this random collection of notes, but a score you want to present to anyone else, how it looks is important. Okay, moving over to the play tab, and this is where you can hear the computer play back the music you've composed. You can also do it on the right tab as you're working on it, but the play tab gives you a little bit more control over the mix and some other parameters. Finally, there's the print tab. You can print out the full score for conductors, but you can also print out the individual parts. Now, we only have one part, so the full score is the part, but imagine an orchestral piece. You don't give the full score to each player. You just give them their part. And often enough, you need to print out multiple parts for each section because there's more than one person in it. And here again, Dorico's done the thing that makes it easy. All the relevant controls accessible with one click. My feelings coming away from Dorico are that it's a really well-conceived program. It has a few game-changing, deeply clever innovations. They will save you time. I also think it looks sleek and modern, and that's a refreshing change. Now, it should be said, Dorico is kind of still developing. It's missing some of the features you'll find on other notation programs like Finale. And there are definitely some bugs and quirks that still need hammering out. It's also one of the most expensive notation programs out there. So if you're after the best value, that's probably not Dorico. For that, I'd say check out MuseScore. It's free. But if you're a serious music professional and time is your most valuable commodity, I'd heartily recommend giving Dorico a try. All right, that's it for this time. If you have any questions about Dorico, ask me in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you catch my future videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Sahar Galt. I'll see you next time.